Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. The first thing I've chosen to talk about today is it's somewhat amazing that women have to be convinced to breastfeed their infants. There are a lot of reasons for this, one of which is the belief that formula is almost the same as breast milk, maybe not identical, but close enough, um, and others that um, uh, there's just not that much disadvantage to the baby. Well, it's simply not true. There is no identical substitute for breast milk, and a new study just highlights one of the reasons why. Breast milk is such a perfect food for infants that the milk changes in response to the timing of the birth of the child. I find this kind of thing fascinating how smart nature really is. For example, infants born prematurely are at higher risk of many issues which include failure to thrive, sepsis, and developmental delays. When a baby is born prematurely, the composition of breast milk changes in order to provide nutrients needed due to early delivery that will compensate for early delivery. Micro RNAs in the breast milk of moms who deliver early block the expression of genes that affect fat storage, allowing for more fat production in preemies. Other microRNAs help to regulate gastrointestinal function and energy use, which are different in premature infants. The microRNAs in breast milk are designed to help a premature infant catch up in terms of growth and development. So the timing of the baby determines the composition of the breast milk. The timing of the baby does not determine the combination of, the, the combination of ingredients and the formula. Now, just to let you know, microRNAs are genetic material made by the body, and that's one of the reasons why you will never see them in formula. According to some, microRNAs can be chemically produced, but the difficulty is matching the material to the particular infant, which the mother is able to do biologically, but the manufacturer is never going to be able to do. The benefits of breast milk are not limited to premature infants. Breastfed babies have stronger immune systems, healthier gut microbiomes, and breast milk provides protection against weight gain and obesity later in life. Now, I would not go so far as my colleague John McDougall, who says on occasion that formula should only be available by prescription. But I do agree with Dr. Martin Blazer, author of Missing Microbes, who says that before women decide to formula feed, they should be asked to sign a consent form, indicating that they have read the risks associated with not breastfeeding, and in spite of that, they want to buy formula. And I think that that's what my company and what we do here is all about. We're promoting informed medical decision making. And all the time I hear in, in this office, um, if I'd known then what I know now, I would have done something entirely different. And I've heard that about breastfeeding. Nobody told me that the situation would be so different as a result of not breastfeeding. So um, we live in America. Women should buy formula if they want to. I just think they should know before they decide to do it what the risks are. And once again, we should have more respect for nature. We really do live in a perfect world if we act as if we do and we treat the world nicely. All right, second topic. I've been, um, I was inspired to write about this because um, while um, we don't have an alcohol program here, um, we certainly do see a lot of people who drink a lot of alcohol and many have become convinced that it's health promoting. There are doctors who are convinced, who write about this and say that alcohol um, is a health promoting substance. You can reduce your risk of heart attack and that sort of thing if you drink alcohol. Well, let's talk about the truth about alcohol. It's a significant risk for cancer. It currently accounts for about 4% of new cancer cases each year and someplace between 3.2% and 3.7% of cancer deaths in the United States. One analysis concluded that, quote, higher consumption increases the risk, but there is no safe threshold for alcohol and cancer risk. Another study concluded that while higher levels of consumption increase the risk, an average of one and a half drinks per day or less accounted for 30% of all alcohol-related cancer deaths. According to the International Agency for Research on Cancer, alcohol consumption can increase the risk of oral, pharynx, larynx, esophageal, breast, and liver cancers. There are close to 100 studies showing that alcohol increases the risk of breast cancer, and the risk even increases at very, very low, low levels of intake. Well, just as the tobacco companies worked very hard to discuss the health risks associated with smoking, the alcohol industry works very, very hard to deceive the public about the risks associated with drinking alcohol. A recent analysis shows that most information from alcohol industry um, organizations, and which is posted on websites maintained by the alcohol industry, significantly misrepresents, misreports the findings of studies that have looked at the relationship between drinking alcohol and cancer. 
Like the tobacco companies, the alcohol industry works through front organizations that position alcohol beverage makers as being socially responsible. Now what this does is it prevents policymakers from taking more um, onerous regulatory actions and it protects sales and profits for the manufacturers. Now unlike the tobacco industry, the alcohol industry has accomplished something kind of amazing. Alcohol producers have been able to maintain their relationships with government health departments and the World Health Organization. Representatives regularly attend meetings during which alcohol is discussed and they, have, they take part in, alcohol, in developing alcohol-related public policies, disseminating, inf disseminating information to the public, and even educating school children about alcohol intake. Question, what are we doing educating school children about alcohol intake other than telling them it's not a good idea to drink it? This type of collaboration is, I think, unethical, um, but the bigger issue is that when you partner with these various health organizations, it lends a lot of credibility to the messages that are coming from the alcohol producers. So um, it's unethical just by its own structure, but it sends a very misleading message to the public at large. Additionally, the producers use numerous strategies such as social media posts and funding think tanks that give the appearance of being independent when they're really not because they're funded by the alcohol producers. Well, this study that I mentioned before, the research group recently analyzed information about alcohol and cancer and how they did it. Um, they wanted to see what the organizations were actually saying. So the information came from the Global Alcohol Producers website, and then they post um, updates and reports. So they took a few months' worth of updates, and then they also added information from 26 alcohol producers' websites. Five websites flatly denied that there was any connection at all between alcohol and cancer risk. 12, 12 out of 20 um, uh, reported that increased risk of cancer due to alcohol intake only affected people who were heavy drinkers or binge drinkers. Now remember I said earlier, the research shows that even at very low levels of intake, the risk goes up considerably and 30% of cancer deaths are attributed to alcohol intake of 1.5 drinks per day or less. Some alcohol makers claim that consuming alcohol could be protective and reduce cancer risk, particularly for smokers. Now these statements are absolutely patently false. So the researchers reported that the industry now uses three main strategies for misleading the public and hiding this cancer risk. Denial, claiming there's no relationship between drinking and cancer, moderate drinkers are not at risk at all. In some instances, the industry just avoids mentioning cancer at all in its communications. Distortion, claiming that the risks are only associated with certain drinking patterns, claiming protective effects when there are none, or implying that since knowledge of the causal mechanism isn't completely known, that we just don't have to worry about it. I guess that's pretty distorted. Distraction, what they'll do is they'll point to a long list of, of other uh, causes of cancer so that the alcohol connection just kind of gets buried and you don't pay attention to it. The authors state that the companies may be misleading even their own shareholders. That certainly happened with tobacco. Many shareholders in the tobacco companies had no idea how dangerous those products were. Well, this type of dishonest behavior is not the exception but the rule, and most food and beverage companies engage in it to some extent. Perhaps it'll, perhaps it'll take lawsuits against the alcohol industry similar to the ones that were filed against the tobacco companies to fix this problem in, in large part. I mean. We would love to think that the uh, tobacco companies or the government took care of the whole problem with tobacco. That's not what happened at all. The reason why you and I can go to a restaurant tonight and have dinner and not have people blowing smoke into our faces is because the trial lawyers made such an issue out of it and proved in court that the stuff was dangerous and that the companies were lying to the public about it. So maybe that's what it's, it's going to take. Um, I'm going to continue to advise people every week who I see in this office that uh, alcohol is, I'm not a teetotaler just for the record so that you know, but it's a rare treat. It's not something to have at dinner every night. It's not something to, um, uh, to consume on a daily basis. And please do not believe these ridiculous medical professionals who get on television and write books about the fact that alcohol is health promoting. I mean, the evidence is just overwhelmingly not the case. All right, well, that's all for today and all for the week, actually. So as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you next week with more news.